Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're finally getting on to Dominion. We're going to start off with something relatively easy, or at least what I thought was easy. We're going to start off with the Hobgrot Slithas. It's a pack of 20 of these guys mixed in. Now, this, I start off with assembly, which is pretty simple, but the thing is though, all the bases that are provided and the models come with that little underneath bar that goes under their feet. And so it'd be a lot of trouble to try to just to remove it all and then deal with the bases like that. So I decided to glue them onto their bases immediately and then apply Liquitex modeling putty onto them to add some texture onto the ground. I normally would never do this, but I figure it'd be a lot harder and more trouble than it's worth. And there's 20 models, so it would take a long time. But this would be faster and I might be able to easily work around it. And now with Bestigore Flesh, Ungor Flesh, and Contrast Iodin Yellow, we're going to paint the skin. I chose these colors because they looked closest to the box art, however I completely forgot that I actually bought the Hobgrot color itself. So I <laughs> just sk skip the Ungor Flesh, Bestigore is fine. So I start with Bestigore Flesh covering everything. And then with an airbrush, I paint at a around a 45 degree angle from uh, their heads. I spray it at a distance, around 6 inches of distance, so that it evenly sprays everywhere and there's good shadows in there. And then finally with contrast, Eden Yellow, I don't paint the whole thing, what I do is I take a fine brush and I paint the deepest recesses or most prominent folds of flesh to contrast them and highlight them better. And now with Contrast Fire Slayer Flesh, I then use this to highlight the scars. They have like these scars all around, I just use it to surround it and just to paint it. And it highlights the scars well. And now with Skeleton Horde Contrast in Wild Ride Red, which is kind of a bright reddish pinkish color. I then take Skeleton Horde Contrast and apply it around their eyes to sort of darken and add shadow. And then I take Wild Rider Red and a very fine brush and I just tap 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 into their eyes to create their oh, pupils. And now with Steel Legion Drab, we're going to apply this all over the bases. I wanted this to be a bright brown color because I'm going to try some stuff. And now with Dark Reaper, I'm going to paint all the metal. I want to experiment. I want the metal to be like a darkish bluish, so I'm going to try this as a base layer. And now with XV88 and Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to paint a few extra details on the model. They have these like cords wrapped around connecting their armor and stuff like ropes. We're going to paint that with XV88. And I did not get the footage for it, I don't know how. But with Evil Sun Scarlet, we paint all the ropes. They have a lot of ropes hanging. They kind of remind me a little bit of like some samurai armor in some of the way they dress. And with Doombull Brown, we're going to paint the loincloths that they have. Now with Skeleton Horde Contrast and Contrast Medium, which was a bad idea, I should have used uh, Lamian Medium because Contrast Medium kind of whitens the color. So with a one-to-one -one mix, I apply this onto all the ropes, I apply this onto all the, like, cord ropes that are hanging on their armor. And now with Mornfang Brown, we're just going to paint the wood staffs for their banners and such and such. And we have a base layer on pretty much everything with a little bit of depth so far. And now with Vallejo Pigments, Light Sienna, and Natural Umber mixed with Matte Varnish, Liquitex Matte Varnish, and Water, I'm going to apply this all over the base and on their feet and a bit of their ankles. However, 
So I'm mixing the two together, supposedly they just separate from each other and you can see like differentiations in the color. That did not happen. I think the matte varnish made it too thick. And so while everything was fine and sealed in and wouldn't get on your fingers, they didn't, it just looked like just blotches of mud. It wasn't smooth. So then I just take the Sienna uh, pigment powder and I just brush it directly on top of the ground. And now with Vallejo Pigments Burnt Umber and Natural Umber, I mix them together with just water, and then I apply them on all the metal pieces, the chest pieces, the pieces on the banner the, of the dark gray, and all their weapons and hand grenades, apparently. I then take Liquitex matte varnish and I mix it with a little bit of water and then I just apply it by tapping it onto all the metal pieces. Now this actually just didn't work. We're supposed to seal in the pigment powder but I can't seem to get it right. What this did was kind of pretty much you couldn't see the pigment powder anymore that much onto the metal. So that was a redundant step. And then with iron hand steel, we're going to dry brush all the metal to pick out all the raised areas, edges, and stuff of his armor plates and weapons. And now with Iron Breaker, Lamian Medium, and Seraph Sephia, I'm gonna try to make like some sort of cool colored mix and apply it to the like brass tokens that they're supposed to have. This fails. I mix uh, Iron Breaker and I mix one part Iron Breaker to two parts Seraph Sephia, and I give it some Lamian Medium to help it flow. This was not the right thing. I probably should have used a contrast paint instead of a shade, and maybe not any Lamian Medium or any water. I don't know, it was a try, a fail, well, at least these hobgrots are a good chance for me to try some stuff. Moving on, with Warp Block Bronze, we're going to paint the instruments they come with. They have a drum, and they have a horn. Now with Xandri Dust, Skeleton Horde Contrast, and Lamian Medium, I don't have it featured, we're going to paint all these skulls. Now with Xandri Dust, we're going to apply this all over the skulls as just a simple base layer. And there's the ones on the banners, but there's two guys mixed in to the uh, Hobgrots that have them on their side, on their right leg. Good luck finding those. And then with Skeleton Horde Contrast, two parts Skeleton to one part Lamian, we then apply it. The Lamian Medium makes the Skeleton Horde Contrast flow much better into the recesses and doesn't make it look murky or like... It doesn't really require an extra highlight. I mean, well, you can if you want to, but it doesn't look bad. And then we take this, mix this Skeleton Horde Contrast and Lamian Medium, and we go back with all these little brass tokens that we tried to make. They look bad, so I apply two coats of this onto the brass tokens to make them look better, or at least not bad. And then with Iron Breaker, we then apply it to all the nails that are just scattered throughout, and also the pins that some of these guys have in their mouths. And then with Ratkarth Flesh, we're going to paint all the teeth. In the cover, they painted these like bluish gray, Dark Reaper, basically like their armor. I thought that was weird until afterwards, and I realized it's the only way to really make their teeth stand out. Well, and then after I painted with Ratkarth Flesh, I then took my mix of Skeleton Word Contrast and Lamian Medium two parts skeleton, one part Lamian, and then just applied a quick layer onto their mouths to make it stand out more. 
And then with technical paint blood for the blood god, we're going to apply this onto the blood of the sergeant's weapon that's hanging down. And we're also going to apply it in random, on some random weapons. You can do it however much you like onto their weapons. And also we're going to place it on a few places where the models got chipped or stuff to just cover it up. And they are done. My first entry of Dominion, but man, meh. Well, this was a good opportunity to experiment, and I can't believe I forgot that I bought the Hobgrot skin color actually and <laughs> didn't use it. Uh, overall, as I would rate this, I'm not really proud or happy of what it's done. Uh, overall, like the complement, uh, the complementary colors, but overall effects and the metal armors turned out pretty well, so I'd probably just give this a 5 out of 10. Like, nothing I tried to do worked. Everything I tried failed. But then again, a bunch of stuff I wasn't used to. I haven't used pigment powders in many years, and I'm not talking about the pastels, because those work and function differently, but pigment powders, this one was... because uh, you have to apply it, and then you have to seal it, and I don't remember how to seal it, and when it's mixed with water, I mean, it flows on well, it distributes well, but then you have to seal it again, and that was kind of the issue. I couldn't really think of a good way to do that. But, oh well. And as, you know, so the pigment powder kind of was a bust. The armor plates turned out pretty well. That was the dark blue, and then you can see the metal stuff, but you still can't see the rust and stuff on their armor. The brass plates didn't turn out well at all. I screwed that up. Um... Uh, overall, the ensemble makes them look somewhat decent. The red ropes, I can understand why Games Workshop chose these colors. Uh, their yellow sickening skin, their red uh, ropes around them, and the bluish grayish armor. I, I, It's nice. It stands out. It's distinct. But, well, I couldn't do that much with it. I, yeah. It's a 5 out of 10. Not the best of starts, but we're moving on. Hopefully, we'll be able to do more stuff faster. This only took so long because... It may be a short video overall, but it's 20 models. And I discovered TTS, so there's that. Alright, so leave a comment if you want to comment, like if you like the video, dislike if you dislike the video, share it if you want to share it, and I will see you again relatively soon. Bye.